A few weeks ago, virtually every YouTube astrophotographer did a video on Blur Exterminator, which is the latest plugin from Russell Croman. And I gotta say, I missed the boat on that one. I didn't even realize it existed until uh, about a month ago. And when I first came on here, I was surprised to see just how good the image looked after running Blur Exterminator. When I tried using the software on my own images, though, I really wasn't all that impressed. However, during my recent workshops in January, we used this software for some of my students' images, and I gotta say, I was blown away by the before and after. So in this case, we have a pretty darn blurry photo of the Orion Nebula. I think the issue here is that one of my students included a blurry photo or two in a stack, and it wasn't rejected, and it ruined the image. And if you're like me, you might be thinking, well, this image is ruined. We can't even do anything with this. The stars are completely blurry. Even the nebula, you can't really see what's going on. It's just too soft. This is not going to work. And that's when I tried Blur Exterminator. I said, well, it's at least worth a shot. When I loaded up Blur Exterminator, this is something that had me a little bit confused was the automatic PSF. And I wasn't sure if I should do that or try to manually find it. And then I saw Adam Block did an interview with Russell Croman recently where they really get into the nitty gritty of how this software works. If you haven't seen that video yet, I highly recommend you watch it. One of the things that I took away from that is that there's a little document icon right here next to the wrench. If you click on that, that's going to bring up a full PDF, if you will, that goes through everything you need to know. So you might want to read through that to learn more. I like to keep things simple though, so I almost always just stick with the defaults. Then I can drag this little triangle over to my image and we'll see how it works. While this is running, I should mention that in terms of the PSF diameter here, you know, you could try to figure this out manually using some of the tools built into PixInsight. But when I did that, the value was like 12 or 13 for my stars. And Blur Exterminator can only handle a value up to about eight. So when I realized that, I said, well, let me just stick with the automatic and maybe it can still do something with the data. And we'll let this run. It'll take about two or three minutes. And once it's complete, we'll do our before and after. Okay, Blur Exterminator has finished just sticking with the default settings. Let's take a look and see how it worked. All right, here's our before and after. Isn't that amazing? For starters, all the stars are actually pretty darn sharp now. And the nebula, which was really blurry before, actually has some distinct edges to it now. I gotta say, when I first saw this during the workshop, I was blown away. And from that point on, I was definitely a believer and Blur Exterminator. This is probably the worst case scenario too. And now that you've seen that it can handle some really rough looking data, you can only imagine just how well it's gonna do if you have slightly blurry stars or just a little bit of shake in your nebula, whatever it might be. Another unintended benefit of Blur Exterminator is that I can now see that there's definitely some images that were included here that should not have been during the stack. Now that I've identified that, I can go back to the raw data, figure out which photos were really the worst offenders, and then remove them and restack the image. Now that you've seen just how well Blur Exterminator works on the worst case scenario, let's take a look at a more common problem. For example, I've got some oxygen photos here that were just a little bit unfocused, and normally that might ruin my image. Let's try using Blur Exterminator though and see how it works. Again, all you have to do really is just stick with the defaults and then drag the triangle over, it's that easy. And there we go, Blur Exterminator has finished again. Let's do another before and after. It's a bit bigger. Here's our before and after. See how much sharper those stars look now after running the software? And also this dark dust lane here in the Rosette Nebula is much more defined, which is another benefit of using Blur Exterminator. Let's check out right here as well. We can see there's not much of a change, but definitely those smaller stars are gonna go a long way to helping the image. And at this point, I'd say that the stars are just about as sharp as they were on my H-alpha data, which I know was properly focused. Which leads me to one other point I should mention. Based off of the interview that Russell Croman did with Adam Block, it sounds like you wanna run Blur Exterminator on your stacked color photo. So even if you're doing monochrome images, you'd go through, you'd grab your LRGB combination or your channel combination, and then once you have your color photo, at that point, you would run Blur Exterminator. You don't necessarily want to run it on your stacked red, green, and blue filters or whatever it might be. And that's why I'd recommend, again, that you check out that interview where you're definitely going to learn quite a bit about Blur Exterminator. That's all I've got for you today, though. I just want to show you that if you've got some blurry stars or maybe even some really blurry data, Blur Exterminator can really save the day.
And so moving forward, I'm going to be incorporating this software into all of my workflows for the future because it is that powerful. And you can always do a free trial here at Blur Exterminator or purchase it. I will note that it's definitely Russell's most expensive program, but considering just how well it works, that does make sense. Finally, if you are thinking about purchasing Blur Exterminator and you've already purchased some of his other software, you can save $10, so make sure you take advantage of that. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll be doing some more videos here on YouTube coming up that show you how to take Blur Exterminator and incorporate it into a larger workflow. So stay tuned, and I'll see you guys in another video.